Hey guys, how's it going today? This is Jim from the Pain PT, and today I'm going to go over a research article with you guys, a review article titled Pavlov's Pain, the Effect of Classical Conditioning on Pain Perception and Its Clinical Implications. Now, many of you are probably aware, but if you're not, of the studies done years ago uh, called Pavlov's Dogs, where what they did was train the dog to have a reaction due to just ringing a bell. So they paired a, the dog getting some food with the ringing of the bell. And what happened was the dogs learned to associate the ringing of a bell with food. And so the dogs would actually start to salivate at the sound of a bell once it was paired up. So that's basically what we call classical conditioning. The dogs were conditioned with the stimulus, which is the bell, and it was paired with the food. Now, they've done subsequent studies on this in terms of pain, because pain, as we talk about, can be also a conditioning or learned pattern. And it can create an association quite quickly because pain is very aversive. It's very, um, it's meant to make us take action, meant to protect ourselves. So very quickly, um, there can be formed an association in your brain with pain, and that can be paired with neutral things, that can be paired with um, activities, um, normal things like touch, movement, sitting, standing, walking, eating, certain normal foods. Um, this conditioning pattern can come about in many different ways. So I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of the research from this article. And I'm going to link it here for you as well. Okay. So there's a lot of heavy stuff in these research articles, but I want to pull out a couple few things for you guys. Um, so one of the things that they found is that actually we can... Um, this classical conditioning or Pavlov's dogs can go both ways. One is that we can condition the brain to have a hypo um, hypoalgesia, which is a, which is less pain response, or hyperalgesia, which is more pain. It can go both ways. Okay, so there's different variables they're finding that are implicated in each of these things. So one of them is um, emotions. Okay, they say emotional val valiance of the unconditioned stimulus could modulate the relationship between conditioning and pain sensitivity. Generally speaking, positive emotions decrease pain and negative emotions increase pain. Okay, we understand that, right, just from talking about emotions and how that can play a role in this. Um, they also say that conditioned hyperalgesia, which is basically more pain, is probably mediated by anxiety, which is supported by accumulating evidence from neurochemical and neuroimaging studies. Now, anxiety is one of the biggest things that I see in people, which is a form of fear that contributes to chronic symptoms. Okay, anxiety is probably, I would say, number one. And so a lot of people are walking around very anxious, very nervous, very fearful of their symptoms or fearful of, of things they're doing. Okay, so that's anxiety. So what happens is that this anxiety, it says here, these neuroimaging studies show that um, it leads to the development of a conditioned hyperalgesia and says the two are two important parts of the brain are the amygdala which we talk about and what's called the insula okay both this area is process anxiety and we're more activated when thermal pain stimuli were delivered uh, in a study okay the the functional connectivity between these two regions between the amygdala and the insula was found to be elevated in conditioned hyperalgesia okay another area was the hippocampus that's an area of the memory formation and the expression of conditioned anxiety. So these are the parts of your brain that are working and showing up with anxiety, also implicated in this conditioning pattern that, that contributes to ongoing pain. Okay, we also find out from these studies is that conditioned hypoalgesia, which is lower pain, okay, that also can be conditioned, is it can be done by modulating the subject's psychological states, such as expectation and emotion which in turn activate descending pain inhibitory system and generate hypoalgesic effects by inhibiting the ascending nociceptive signals. So what this means, and I talked to you guys about this, that the expectation that you're fine, that you're going to get better, that this is a brain and nervous system issue, your, your condition, your chronic condition, not a structural one that needs to be attended to in an acute way like we do with acute pain or with alarm or worry or concern. Okay, and again, emotion. If we have positive, we want to have a positive interpretation. We want to be positive about these things, not negative. Negative emotions, fear, worry, concern, getting overly frustrated and irritated. 
that's been linked with more pain. Okay, so we're trying to generate positive emotion and an expectation that we're going to, that this, that this is gonna help, we're gonna get better. Okay, those are the things that are important ingredients to getting a lower pain reaction from the science. Okay, so we have this descending in, in inhibition system and it comes from your prefrontal cortex and goes through a bunch of different areas of your brain down into your body. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to get activated in you guys, okay? So again, this expectation and emotion are the two things to talk about here. And that works through your prefrontal cortex, which I'm always talking about, your hippocampus, and even you know goes to your amygdala as well with the message. So one of the things to say, the importance of classical conditioning and pain chronification is also emphasized in the fear avoidance model. I talk a lot about that too, guys, how this fear avoidance plays into the conditioning pattern. Okay, the model states that individuals who respond to pain with two different strategies. Now, these are the two that we talk about as well as confrontation or avoidance. If the confrontation strategy is adopted, no excessive pain-related fear would be experienced and pain would cease after healing of the injury. In contrast, if the avoidance strategy, which is i.e. catastrophizing pain, is adopted, pain-related fear would evolve, which in turn leads to disability, disuse, hypervigilance, and misinterpretation of the bodily sensations. This is what is happening for a lot of you guys. I keep saying you got to get back to what you're not doing confrontation you got to confront these things the science is really clear on this is that the fear avoidance plays into the conditioning pattern which it becomes the problem itself not it has nothing to do with what you believe about your pain being something else okay this is this is what we understand from the science so these overactions to pain would further increase fear thus forming a vicious circle of fear and avoidance, which contributes significantly to the elevation of pain sensitivity and persistence of excruciating pain. This model is supported by abundant findings that pain catastrophizing fear of pain were strong predictors of chronic pain. Huge, huge, huge. Um, can't say it enough. We need to confront, not avoid things that you're not doing. That's how you're going to get better, guys. And that's going to get you out of this conditioning pattern as well. That, that we're learning and understanding is associated with chronic pain. So um, a couple other things to talk about here is that um, we're trying to, um, a couple of things, are, we're trying to reduce also what's called generalization where the, the pain is just located or associated with various particular things where then it become generalized. It can become broader where all of a sudden it was just maybe sitting that, that was associated with your pain. Now it's... Uh, standing and walking and sitting and everything else so it gets a broader okay where it becomes broader and that's also a conditioning response so we're trying to um, look at how can we reduce that or minimize the response okay it's called extinction and some studies show that that's we we quickly make the association for pain and not as quickly make it extinct okay and so that's the challenge is like we need to reteach the brain that we're safe, we're fine, and, and do that over and over again sometimes to, to it finally learns that. So it's slower to relearn that we're safe. It's going to err on the side of caution. It's going to going to try to overprotect and maybe not as quickly let that go. And that's why we need a lot of um, repetition, okay, in the right way. So, you know, to talk about extinction can, um, you know, work on reducing their reaction, but you also got to work on the memories as well that are associated with doing certain things and beliefs. Like doctor tells you one thing and it's stored in your brain, it's a memory. We need to work on that as well to change the understanding because otherwise those memories are prone to get reactivated and you, let's say, get an uptick in your symptoms and all of a sudden you forget about all this stuff and you go back to the old way and that would be called like a setback, right? So we're trying to, to put in new information, new understanding to counter these old, old memories. Okay, the failure of extinction, this might be either due to the strong expectation subjects held about the condition effect or due to the intrinsic characteristics of the condition hyperalgesia. So there's a couple things here, you know, the ex, if you have a strong expectation that it's not gonna get better or this is gonna get worse, that's, it's gonna be really hard for these conditioning patterns to break down. Okay, so one of the things here, they talk about eliminating excessive fear and overgeneralization. Um, 
They say, since excessive conditioned fear and overgeneralization are supposedly responsible for the transition from acute to chronic pain, eliminating them are two important goals in developing effective treatments of chronic pain. Okay, so graded exposure. Talk a lot about that too. We got to get back gradually doing everything again. It's one of the most promising treatments focusing on eliminating excessive conditioned fear. Okay, it consists of three steps. Cognitive behavioral assessment, which again is our understanding of what's going on education and then exposure all right and it's the efficacy of this has been attested across the variety of conditions um, chronic low back pain complex regional pain work-related upper extremity pain spinal pain um, and it ex successfully reduced pain related fear catastrophizing functional disability and the effects persisted up to six months after treatment okay so we're, this is a big big piece guys and is, is going and confronting these things. When you understand this, we need the understanding first, and then we gotta move forward with this graded exposure. Okay, so um, one of the things they say also is many existing studies combine conditioning with and verbal inf information to induce a hyperalgesia or hypoalgesia. Again, hyper is more pain, hypo is less. And and it says the result, any success or failure in establishing a condition hyperalgesia or hypoalgesia might be attributed to either or both of them. So conditioning and verbal information. Now verbal information is what? What people have told you, okay? The doctors might give you a message or someone else that might be very different from the message I'm giving you, okay? So that could go either way, depending on what you believe and understand. Okay, and combining that with your conditioning over certain things that you're doing. So in conclusion, they say classical conditioning has been demonstrated to profoundly modulate the experience of pain and partly shape pain's role in human health. So I really wanted to touch base on this today, guys, because we talk about emotions a lot and the brain, but we, this conditioning pattern is also a real thing. And we want to work on that aspect as well in our recovery and understand it, that Pavlov's dogs... Uh, we're still like dogs in a sense of our animalistic nature. We still can be trained in the same way. And pain is a very, very strong and very quick thing that the brain is going to pay attention to and make quick associations with. And we got to break these things down. All right, guys, I'll link the article here. Um, if you got any questions, put them in the comments. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.